Aloha, everyone, and welcome to Woman Unleashed. It's time for another session, and I'm really excited to be here today. I'm really looking forward to you know how I'm going to feel at the end of this session, and I'm really excited to introduce you to our um, guide today. But before we do that, like every time, let's just go ahead and take a moment to get present. So today what I want you to do is to go ahead and just settle in your chair, wherever you're at. And if you have your journal or your pen, go ahead and just kind of put that to the side. And with me, I want you to take your hands and just rub your hands together. It's like Karate Kid. And I want you just to sense the palms of your hands right now. And I want you to imagine like your hands sparkling with light. And imagining that same energy in the base of your spine and traveling right up your spine, sparkling. And as you inhale, I want you to imagine like an accordion, you expanding as you inhale and then exhale and then exhale then expand even more and then last time expanding so that sparkles reach all the way out and we're here and we're ready to go so can't wait to share um, our guide today a couple of reasons why one is because um, I know this person we've been working our businesses together and so it's a real pleasure to be able to kind of collaborate and do something fun together and and two because she's just an autumn just an amazing wonderful yummy juicy snuggly person and so I can't wait to for you to get to know her too so today we're gonna work with Mia uh, Mia science 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 thank you Mia um, she's a transformational spiritual practitioner and a media host. You're going to see when you see her, she's got like headphones on. She looks super professional. Um, she is the creator of Total Flow Mastery and a Beautiful As You Are Now. I love that. Beautiful as you are right now in this moment. Um, two programs that bring self love into your lives. And, you know, as I talked about before, self love is huge. Without self love, change doesn't happen. So we have to kind of start there, yeah? Um, Total Flow Mastery, she teaches the methods of conscious self-love and understanding fears and shifts our consciousness. And then that creates manifestation, yeah? And then Beautiful As You Are Now is also conscious self-love, but it's also like the feminine essence work, like tuning into beauty and bringing out that confident, sexy, feminine part of yourself. And so both of these programs kind of dive into inner peace and confidence and enable people to live the life that they want right now. So she lives in Los Angeles, California with her husband, who I met, had lunch with the other day. Super cool guy. And um, she also, through her media work as a radio and TV host. So she's able to spread the love. I don't even know, Mia, how many radio shows do you have now? Like, I was checking it out. I'm like, I think you have like a billion or something. I don't even know. <laughs> I have um, the Passion Muse show on Healthy Life. I've had um, some that have been transferred over to iTunes, and I'm going to be starting a video one, a live where people can ask questions. I'll be talking about a spiritual topic, and that's called Conversations with Mia, and that starts in January. I'm so excited, but Me too. I'm. Yeah, but I can't wait to just, I'm imagining right now that I'm holding my virtual speaking stone and I'm passing the stone over to you for you to share um, with our listeners and those on retreat things that they can really help them connect more to their self-love and, um, and tune in more deeply. So take awesome. it away, Mia. Thank you. And thank you so much for creating this magnificent experience for women all over the world to be able to join in. Having a retreat and online is just brilliant, and you are brilliant, so thank you. Mm. So self-love started with me not until I was in my early 20s, 
And the reason I'm going to share with you briefly my history is, for those of you who don't know me, this is strength that you can gain for yourself. Because I had so many exit points in my life. I was born at six months, an identical twin, and my sister died. And I survived, um, thrived. Um, I had an abusive childhood, although I was raised metaphysical. My mother was a little bit out there. And I survived. And it wasn't until I was 25 that I started doing research into how can I find inner peace? How can I be happy? How can I not feel controlled by this woman? I was already married. I got married at 18 for, to my first husband. So how can I, at turning 25, actually become the woman I want to be? So I, I started doing research. So what I teach is from all my research, and plus it's been downloaded from the divine over years of meditation, creating programs for people. So the Total Flow Mastery, I love so much. I love the other one, Beautiful You Now, but that's my newest one. Total Flow Mastery is all about connecting to our higher self. Conscious self-love is so beautiful. Well, as Amber said, it's conscious self-love, understanding fear, shifting your consciousness and manifestation. So in conscious self-love, everyone's talking about self-love, and I'm so glad. I see it everywhere now. I'm actually beginning to see it really mainstream, which is really amazingly beautiful. Conscious self-love is slightly different than self-love. There's thousands of methods, because we're all different, of how to connect to ourselves. But conscious self-love is making it conscious about us in that moment. When you shift your consciousness to have it reflect upon you rather than just an automatic thing, it settles into our, our the depth of us so smoothly and clearly. And when we connect our body, mind, and soul together, we truly are magnificence. I like to peel away the layers of the garbage over our life, which is stripping the body, so that our soul can experience what it is meant to be here. Our bodies keep us trapped. It's like our soul is trapped in these bodies until we understand that we can pull it all away and reveal the beauty within. When we reveal the beauty within, we can do anything and we're free to move around and do everything like that. And I will go back to some of the body work in, um, in shifting your consciousness and understanding fear. So you can do amazing things. I'd love to share with you all some tips that I use with my clients. And these... I have these six month programs. I used to have six weeks, but boy, people would just be like burnt out because they would have so much work, like four hours a night instead of just a regular life learning things. So in these six month programs, it's totally amazing. I'd like you to take a pad of paper every morning for at least a couple months and stand in front of the mirror. Do this about four times a week. Stand in front of the mirror and say to yourself, I love you. Now, if this is the first time that you've ever experienced this, please do not feel frustrated in your reaction. They are they vary. Mine, I broke out in tears and said, no, I hate you. That's when I realized I had a lot of work to do. Um, others laugh at themselves, which is a disconnect. Some people feel cold. Some people feel OK. And also, you can write me, and my team and I will write you back and give free advice. So if anything that I offer you, you find that you're struggling with, please feel free to write us, and we will get back to you, promise. So looking at yourself in the mirror, look at your whole upper body and your face, and just enjoy the beauty of who you are, and talk to yourself lovingly. I love you. See what it feels like to say, you're amazing. Write this stuff down because you will see how your reaction shifts over time. You will have weeks where you'll start to feel like, oh my goodness, I'm actually changing. I love myself. And then you might go back a couple steps. And that's okay because that's part of the process that we take in any type of self-awareness and self-growth work is to go back and forth. But we jump forward so much quicker when we take these little tiny steps backwards. So please be gentle with yourself. That's another thing of self-love. Be very gentle and honoring of your, of your growth that you're doing. And the journal is so important to keep. This just a simple writing tablet of your experience in front of the mirror because you can go back and see your growth. When you're in your down spots and you say, gosh, I'm just so horrible, I'm so ugly, I'm this, I'm that, 
when you go through your paperwork, you will see that there have been times when you have connected so deeply, so amazingly, that you were surprised. And so it's really, it's really beautiful to do that. Do anything and everything for self-love that makes you feel good. Did you want to ask a question, Amber? Yeah, I do, actually. Um, just to clarify a little bit. So what you'd like us to do is to um, take a pen and paper, go to the mirror, and then you know look in the mirror and like tell myself you are beautiful you are wonderful and first, first I, I love, love you yes I love you and then afterwards write the experience that I had or yes because yeah. a lot of people have horrific experiences so don't be surprised if you do anyone that's not familiar with self-love work um, and and those who are I have self-love teachers who come to me and we do this work and you know and we talk about it weekly and they're surprised at the effect that it does have on our ability also if you are so and please this does happen and I'm hoping that it's none of you watching but if you have such an upset disregard for yourself like hatred start with your eyes just use a handheld mirror look at how gorgeous your eyes are the color the flex, the shape, the brow bone, the depth of your eyes, get to know you that way and then start to move out slower, your top of your head and then your nose and then your mouth. It does take time for some people to shift slowly that way. And it's, everything is okay that you're doing and just honor yourself gently with it. Mm. We're going to ask another question? Yes, I was going to say, so what what we're doing with this, then it sounds like, it's kind of like we're flexing our self-love muscle a little bit. It's like the, the more and more we tell ourselves that we love ourselves and then start feeling that, then the more we're going to actually feel that. Is that, is that what's it, happening? It is. And also, what really amazingly happens is, and I'll give you some more tools, but we're, we're releasing the body. The body has, as I mentioned earlier, has more or less trapped our soul. We're brilliant, beautiful beings when we're born, and society, media, school, teachers, you know, neighbors, unfortunately, pile their garbage on us that don't even belong to us. So what we're doing is we're removing all the crap and, and allowing our soul to reflect. All these little exercises that I'm going to give you is something to get to know your body. Yes, hi, body. I love you. You're beautiful. And then that way you're not, when we love our body and we understand ourselves, our soul just flies. We're not limited to not being able to express ourselves. Here's another one. I do these honor baths with, well, I don't do them with people, but <laughs> I instruct them. I don't get in the tub with you. So this would be for a tub or shower. Choose a couple of gels and hair stuff that you would like to have in your shower. If you're on a limited budget, try to get two. If one is all you can afford, that's okay. They have wonderful smelling stuff that's very affordable in the grocery store. So when you do your hair, when you naturally wash your hair, you're going to actually feel you touching the roots and as you rub yourself and feel your hair all the way through. And you're going to be giving gratitude. How amazing this feels. Rub yourself. Enjoy yourself. And for me, I have a, we all have different strange processes in the shower so get your strange ones out of the way first and then put on a beautiful scrubby or cloth or whatever you use your gel and as you rub your body you're gonna look at your arm and you're gonna say I love you and why do I love you because I can hold the people I love I can draw I can paint I can wave my hands at people it may sound silly but when you get in touch with yourself, it's not. You begin to love it. I have one client that tells me, Mia, I do these every single day. <laughs> and I'm like, you rock, girl, <laughs> because she actually is connected to her own body, which is so important for us to do. Our breasts, our tummy, our bum, all the places that we don't normally pay attention to, pay attention because as we get to understand ourselves, is where this extra conscious self-love comes in and our body doesn't distract us. In one of the exercises in a few minutes where it comes to understanding fear, I'm going to ask you to look at your hand and most people when they look at their hand, they're very confused at what they're seeing. I've heard more people say, I'm totally tripped out, I feel like I'm on drugs and that's because we're not used to looking at our body. And did you see how I move my hand gracefully? It's because I love myself instead of just wonk, you know. It's it's a beauty within because I've learned this. And this is and you and you will too if you haven't. And if you have, you're 
it's amazing. I just love when people have already started to understand their own value and their own worth. So there's the mirror work, there is honor baths. I also, um, there's a meditation in the free gift that I'm giving. Um, so use that meditation once a week. It's called the inner child meditation. And it introduces us to our inner child that we can learn to love like no one ever has loved us before. Start at age three, do that for several weeks and build up, skipping every couple years, you know, up to five, seven, and I would stop at 13 or 16, whichever you like. But building that relationship totally allows us to emotionally mature. And so our inner child, our inner voice, our inner being actually will stand up for us as adults in this stage right now when we're in our most desperate space. It's happened to me before and it's happened to people that I've taught this exercise to and who have done this meditation. When they raise their inner child and fall in love and raise them with love, they actually hear a voice when they're not doing something that they know is not correct saying, what are you doing? This is not you. Pay attention, you know, or whatever the voice is telling you. So you actually have your inner self emotionally developed, which is what a society we're not taught to do. So those are three exercises regarding conscious self-love. Now I'd like to move to understanding fear because we don't have a heck of a lot of time. This whole process, you know, uh, can take hours and hours and this is great. So understanding fear. Anytime that you have something that makes you fearful, we all have them. We have these these thoughts of, um, I don't have enough money. I, I, you know, a sense of lack. I'm, whatever it is. I'm fearful for my child or I, I can't even think because I've worked through so many of them. But let's take the one about money. Okay, so you take it and you actually hold it out here as if you're holding like a ball or something. And you're looking at that fear, that idea of what that fear is. I'm looking at, okay, I'm, I'm really frightened that I might not have enough money by the end of the week. So then you reverse engineer it backwards towards you, you break it down piece by piece. Amber and I both have a coach that does not like us to reverse engineer, but on this we're going to. <laughs> so when you um, look at it, you, you have to break it down. Why am I fearful? I might not have enough rent. I might not have enough food. I might not have enough for my car payment. And then you have to keep breaking it down to understand that it's not going to kill you. Most people's biggest fear is death, and so they relate everything to death. It's, we're in a fight or flight mode, you know, as in this human realm. This is how we were created thousands of years ago. And so when you break it down, each thing back to the core essence of your soul, of who you are, you realize the unreality of this fear. And when you can see that it becomes unreal is when you start to understand fear you make peace with it. Not that it can be your best friend, I mean it can be if you like, but it is really fun to develop this exercise of understanding fear because you can take anything that upsets you or that's fearful and you can bring it back to the core essence of peace again because you break it down to see the unreality. And speaking of death, this just came to me, if one of us was at that stage where we are about ready to pass on, and you do all these type of self-growth things, you are going to pass on with such beautiful ease because you understand the unreality of what our human life is and that we're infinite spiritual beings and that we're always going to be here. So no matter what you believe in, we all believe in, well, most of us believe in a higher source. And so when you take it back to that we're still connected to that higher source, we are that higher source, our soul is, it releases fear. People who, again, this is coming to me to say, so people who um, might have an illness, a major illness, a, a critical chronic illness, it can shift and change as we change our thought process, as we change our fear. So fear not, you can come through and ease your, your mind, which will allow your soul to take care of and love you and nurture you. I'm going to move on to shifting your consciousness because it also is a stepping stone from understanding fear. As humans, we tend to have a lot on our mind and we're not in the present moment. So getting back to the present moment is one of the most important things. 
Shifting our consciousness is removing those ruminating thoughts that constantly, constantly are moving around within us. Whether it's, I've got a grocery shop, or carrying on a conversation with, say, your boyfriend that you had a fight with, or a friend, or anything, or your husband. Changing that thought as it comes in and wants to relive, who wants to be more powerful? This is what I used to say to myself. Do I really want to live in the realm of, I have to be right, or do I want peace? And as I started to realize that in the shifting, you shift when you've had enough. I'll say to clients, when is enough enough? And when they see that shift within their thought that they don't want to suffer anymore, they're like, I'm ready. I'm ready for change. I'm ready to learn. So it's all about shifting our consciousness. Some people call it mindset. Some people call it mental toughness. There's a lot of things that people call it. And it's really just being on our thought you know, the mental process, the human element, could be part ego, but always being aware of what we're thinking. One, it brings us back into the present moment, and two, it eliminates our fear. Because if we're not willing to project all this spin cycle like a wash machine over and over and over, and then wash and then repeat, and then wash and then repeat, if we're not willing to do that, then we can really control our thought process, which in this reality that we live in, it is just thought. Everything is thought. When you think about quantum physics and all that, it's just a thought. Everything is a thought. So when you shift and are in control of your thought, you're really in control of you, in your spiritual element, in your human element. So the body, mind, and soul has perfect harmony there. Question. The yes, ma'am. Yes. So on that piece, um, so I understand the benefit to watching our thoughts and you yes. know not letting it spin out of control and so that we actually make changes. Mm -hmm. So what would you say for people that are like they don't even they know that they're thinking negative thoughts but they don't even catch themselves in the middle of it yet. They're still they're totally get into the drama of it all, go down that rabbit hole, and then later emerge and go, Oh my gosh, that was okay. totally automatic. Yeah. Right. The very cool thing about this is when you declare to yourself that you want change, no matter what it is, you've taken your first step for change. I want to change, so here's an example. I want to change the way that I think. I don't want to continually ruminate over and over. I want to heal. I want to grow. I want to be confident and powerful in every single moment that I can be. And granted, we have our fallbacks, like I said before about mirror work, but then we leap forward even faster. People have thousands of things going on at one time. But the more you work this, I, I have like a handful that I deal with because it's something that I've done for years and years and years. So what you were asking is, um, I slightly got off track, mentally off track there. Um, you, yeah. you, you said... So I said, you know, for those people that go down that rabbit hole yes. and they don't emerge until later. Right. So that's the exact same thing that I start. Sorry, that I started with is de declaring that. So each time that we declare that we want to have peace and harmony in our life, we don't want to go down that rabbit hole. We don't want our consciousness to ruminate. Is when each time it's less and less, and we will become aware of our thinking because we're starting to train ourselves. I remember once um, a spiritual healer that I was seeing a lot instead of a therapist had said to me, do you realize that you're having a lot of car accidents and that's a lot of chaos? And I said to her, oh my goodness, you're right. I think I want it to change. So this was like 17 years ago. And I said, how can I get it to change? And she said, you just did. You just declared to the universe that you want to shift in your consciousness. And I was like, thank you. And do you know that since then, I don't know if I've ever been in a car accident since then. It's totally amazing because then I was aware that I wanted that change because I recognized the image before me and I wanted it changed. It's deeper than the law of attraction, but it's still similar in the effect that we project out what we want and so we receive it. It's not just about always just thinking about like a car, I want to buy a car, I want to buy a car. We're actually doing work so that we're manifesting. Now all this goes into manifestation. When you understand about self-love, you're in a higher vibration. When you understand about fear, there's nothing that can stop you from creating. When you understand how to shift your consciousness, you can literally manifest anything you want in your life. And I do work as a manifesting coach, and so I know this to be fact. I have many testimonials, and I know you can do it too, and that's, that's all I'm saying about that is this is something that can be done. It's a spiritual element. 
it's beyond the law of attraction because we can we can have brought into our experience if we surrender anything we need if we realize that there is money that we're needing for say rent or something else I'm just trying to use simplistic terms and you put it out to the universe okay father I, I understand you know you go through the whole process and you you've removed your fear you understand that you'll be provided for things do show up they show up in past taxes they show up in checks they show up in job offers I like to think of this this way when we are born on in this experience and we are infinite spiritual beings we are born with a complete care package from the divine we have everything we've always needed one that allows us to calm down and realize everything is in its divine order now another thing that I love about this is just imagine whatever holiday is the most gracious to you whether it's Christmas whether it's your birthday whatever it is look at it as opening up a closet door and everything is in that closet that you need all you have to do is shift your consciousness to claim it you have to know that it's already yours it's divinely yours and may I also say don't go for a little tiny blue of course they're really cute nowadays but a really tiny blue um, Volkswagen bug when you wanted a Lamborghini because you can manifest what you need want and desire it's not just about what you need it's what you feel is right for you energetically in your space it's all about bringing in the goodies that have already been you know been stated to us when we came here we we're born with care packages don't ever forget that you were not born with a care package because you were you're magnificent so with that I would like to do a heart-based exercise yeah, let's let's do it really quickly though. Okay. I just want to okay. quickly just reiterate what you said because it was so yes, good. Please do. So, first step is the self love step, and so we talked about the mirror exercise, the um, honor baths, love that, mm -hmm. and then the inner child meditation. Yes. Yeah? And yes. then looking at understanding fear, and kind of reverse engineering or going through things backwards, so you kind of go like. It's almost like what's the worst that could happen? What's the worst that could happen? What's the worst that could happen? You go all the yes. way down that space, yeah? Yes. yes. Um, to kind of get yourself from out of being in such fear. Mm -hmm. And then next step was shifting your consciousness and get to get back to the present moment. Mm -hmm. um, not not being unconscious about what we're doing, yeah? Exactly. And to stop all the extra energy and garbage that we don't need in, in our experience. So it's stopping our energy from being put into something else instead of being put into what it should be which is us and producing and creating magic in our life and then last step manifestation so all that work or, or is not work self-love all of the connecting tuning inward releasing fear and you know being aware and conscious is gonna help in the manifestation of manifesting what yes. we really want and desire mm -hmm. um, from that space yeah absolutely and I'd also like to say one more thing that it's conscious self-love because we can make ourselves coffee in the morning oh this is a sweet thing I'm making coffee yum yum put chocolate in it but if you say I'm going to make myself an amazing cup of coffee because I am just as amazing as that coffee and I'm worth it and you go in with that space it absorbs into your body so much faster it's quantum style and when I discovered that I just it blew my mind at how fast people were shifting when they consciously were aware with their intention that it was for themselves because nobody will show us true unconditional love except ourselves we try for others but we are also human besides spirit <laughs> so Wow, I could really go down a rabbit hole with that one, but I'm not going to because we have somewhere else to go. But I'm like, oh, really? I want to talk about that. We can do that um, another time. <laughs> that another time. I know exactly. So I can't wait. So let's go ahead and let's start with. Um, Wonderful. With the the heart place. Okay, super. So I'd like you to just relax, everyone. Just melt into your chair. I'm going to close my eyes along with you as I do this. This is very wonderful. So breathe deeply in. All good from the universe. Push it down into your lower abdomen, into your second chakra, almost as if it's a wave rolling around in that space of our womb. 
and back up, pulling out everything negative, exhaling slowly. Breathe in, pulling in everything good from the universe, past our heart, down our abdomen, into our lower belly, pulling everything negative, everything we don't want out, and exhale it slowly. Bring in again. Mm, push down. Removing everything that we don't want in our body. Energy that's not good, extra old energy. Exhale slowly. I'd like you to feel your heart inside your body and feel warmth building. Put your energy into your heart right now. Have it spread out to every part inside your body without leaving your body, your neck, your head, your shoulders, your chest, your arms down to your fingertips, through your torso, your lower body, your legs, down over your knees, your lower legs, and to your toes. Feel the power. Feel the love. Ooh, feel that energy. Ooh. Okay, now we're going to let it release through our fingertips and our toes, spreading out into the room we're in. Hold that space for yourself. That love, that energy, it's powerful. Go into the next room of your house. Keep it going. Now we're outside of our house, in our yards. Move it down to the end of the block. Keep going through your town. Pushing the love and energy. You're very powerful. Out a thousand miles. Hold that space. I'm going to take you one major step further. We're going out a hundred thousand miles. Whew. Up above us, down below us, and all around. In your mind, see where you are. See where you are in the place of Earth and feel the outside edges of that hundred thousand miles with the love that just came from your body. Take the goodness from the universe that you feel out there. Start to bring it into your hands, almost like you're just pulling them in slowly. You're pulling in good. You're pulling in grace. You're pulling in glory. You're pulling in your divinity. Bring it back into your body. Come back slowly. Back from that 100,000 miles to that 1,000 miles we left. Ground yourself. Come back further into your town. Into your neighborhood. into your block, come into your yard, come back into your home, and pull it back into your body. Just have it mix around inside your body and feel it. Now I'm going to bring you out. I'd like you to take your hands and rub your arms and your tummy as you're coming back out into the place right here, your upper legs. Move your feet on the floor and then start to move in your chair and start to ground yourself. Mm, here we are. You can slowly open your eyes and do you feel the love? Mm. Mm. We had to do that a little fast because of the timing, but you can do that slower and it can be very sensual because you're, you're producing and you're creating so much love that you already have in you. We are energy beings. 
everything is energy and thought and we have that within us so you can take that with you at any time and just hold it and love yourself with it i love that exercise it's brilliant and it feels awesome <sighs> I feel like I'm like a glowing light bulb of love <laughs> and like there's like gazillions of you all over the planet and we're all like going wong, 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 wong. It feels so good. Mm, thank you so much, Mia. You're very welcome. Thank you. So I know that you have something that you'd like to share with our group. Mm -hmm. I'm very excited about it. <laughs> I am going to share with you, I have a new CD that's being released, and it's called Spirit Life, and there's four transformational guided meditations on it. The first one is the inner child that I spoke of. The second one is called Clarity, which brings you to that loving, happy space of feeling that you are totally loved. So if you're ever down, listen to it. I have I have people that write me and say, because this is... I started sharing it first to get comments on it before we released it. And I've had people say that they use it in their morning rituals. So I'm very graced with that, you know, very blessed. There is um, Restful Intentions, and it teaches people how to get amazing sleep with the intention, no matter whether you have sleep apnea or nightmares or whatever, it's setting your intention for a positive sleep, creating your intention for the next day for a beautiful, calm work day, or any kind of day and it also will teach us to set our internal alarm clock so that it goes off like one minute before our actual alarm clock works I mean goes off and as I was thinking that I'm like and it works so that's why that came in there and the last one was I sent out um, it was going to be on manifestation which will be on my next CD but I asked a group of people um, took a survey what would you like my last CD or what my last um, meditation to be and I was told on grounding because a lot of people don't know how to bring themselves out of that frustration that sometimes people feel with depression and they can't get out of bed and that kind of stuff so grounding is about grounding ourselves. it's also a magnificence thing because we are a magnificent creature so enjoy it write me let me know how you like it I'm so excited that you guys are gonna enjoy it please mm -hmm. do Mm -hmm. Thank you, Mia. So, with everybody, Thank if you, you want to go ahead and like click the link right here, not until we yeah. finish, but click the link right here, and yeah. um, that's going to have your link for the free gift. And also, check in your email box, it'll be there too. Awesome. But I love that, Mia. Um, for me, talking purely selfishly, I am a big fan of sleep. Um, ever since I had babies, I'm like, I love sleep. And so, I know that. Um, for me, it's so frustrating when I want to get to sleep and I can't get to sleep because whatever is running on. And so, how beautiful that you created something to kind of help calm, in order to like get really delicious sleep. So I'm I'm looking forward to that one myself. Yay. <laughs> Thank you. So everyone, we're gonna go ahead and um, see you at our next session. I'm gonna actually have Mia close with us today. She has this beautiful poem that I heard. And I just, like, uh, it made my soul sing when I heard it. And so this is what I want you to do, is I want you to just stay in the energy of where we're at right now, whatever self-love that you're feeling right now, and let this just wash over you like a verbal bath of love. And I will see you at our next session. Mia, yeah? take Thank it away. You. Thank you. Lotus flower. I am as a lotus flower. I came from the depths of the murk, almost lost, for I could not see in the constant confusion. But I could feel my heart guiding me. As I clung in to my greater strength, which is my relationship to God, I grew up bright and whole. I knew, for God was my true parent. In the darkness, I felt his love. The light began to shine, and shine it did. The stronger I rejoiced in this present, up out of the murk I came. Not long before my 14th birthday, my father passed on. In that trial, my lotus petals began to open slowly. One at a time. I am strong and beautiful, not because of me, but thee. As I have loved in life, I continue to know my gentleness and strength. My foundation is strong, 
and I have grown out of the murk into the light. I am the lotus flower. I know my sacredness. And thank you, as you can see, that really touched me because it's been quite a journey. And thank you, Amber, for so much for having me on. Mm. I had no idea I'd react like that. I'm sorry. <laughs> Don't be sorry. It's perfect. And I know you're touching people right now that feel that. Sending aloha to all. Mm.